y'all welcome or welcome back to my channel it's your girl daisy budgets and over here on my channel i do savings challenges sinking funds updates cash stuffings a little bit of everything so if any of that sounds like something you might be interested in make sure to like comment and subscribe and smash that notification bell to be notified every time i upload a new video so today's video has been requested i received the comments um well it's been a couple of weeks now but i received a comment from a subscriber asking me if i would be willing to go through my binders and kind of explain them and how I use my envelopes and I asked you guys if you guys would be interested in seeing that and a lot of you did so I am here to do that for you today so um hmm I didn't quite work out how exactly I was going to present this so we're just going to jump right into it for the most part these three oops okay <laughs> for the most part like i was saying i'll just leave that right there these are my three main binders right so this is my high priority this is my family binder and this is my lowest priority technically my family binder is another high priority binder however there's only so many envelopes i can fit into one binder so it's split up so these are technically two high priority binders and then I have my lowest priority binder. So if you are new to budgeting, that's exactly how I would suggest that you work it out. Make sure that you have yourself a high priority, things that must be paid um, for you that might be your bills. I get a lot of questions asking me um, why I don't budget for groceries or utilities or rent or any of that, why you guys don't see that. And it's because I do all of that online and electronically through my checking account. So you guys don't see that, that money movement. What you do see is the money that I pull um, after my bills are paid. So I am paying my bills every week. I am going grocery shopping every week or every other week, um, depending on my needs. And I do pay my rent every month because you can't live somewhere and not pay rent, right? So all of that is getting done, but you guys just don't get to see that because I do all of that online. Um, and for me, it just doesn't make sense to pull the funds, to stuff them, to just put them back into the bank. It just kind of, for me, it just doesn't make sense. I want my budgeting process to be as simplified and as easy to keep up with for me as possible. So I suggest that you guys do the same. If you find it easier to take out the funds and stuff it every week, then go ahead. By all means, do that. But I do suggest that you start with two binders, a high priority, which these two are my high priority and a lower priority. My lower priority binder for me is money that I reach for more frequently. I pull from this one the most. It has my beauty, my nails, my, let me just skim through this real um, quick, gifting. Um, let's see, it has my Costco envelope. It has an, a supportive friend, you know, my friends who have Etsy shops and I want to support them. It has those kind of envelopes in there. They're not necessities though. So if I find myself in a pinch and I can't stuff them, that's okay because these are non-necessities. These are more of wants and things that I want to do as opposed to my obligations and my necessities. I hope I'm making sense to you guys. So, I'm going to start off with my high priority binder. So in my high priority binder, I'll do it this way since I'm not doing any stuffing right now. I have my car maintenance. Obviously, it's just what that is for. So um, I stuff it every week. You, I choose my amounts based on how I feel comfortable. So it can vary. Some like my Christmas envelope for me, that's high priority. I want to make sure that I hit a goal of $1,100 before Christmas time. Usually by October, I would like to hit that goal. So it depends. I do reach in my car maintenance from time to time, but not very often. So for example, we needed an oil change. We needed some things for the car. A lot of the work my husband does to the car himself. He's very handy in that way. Thank you, Jesus. And um, so we save a lot of money that way. So we do pull from this whenever we need to get things done to the car. If anything that um, needs to get done that he can't do himself, then we will take it to a mechanic. So that's car maintenance. I also use car maintenance. For example, let's say I'm going to visit my father. Um, he lives a couple of boroughs away from me. So it's 
a bit of a drive so i know i'm gonna have to pay for like some tolls so if i have to pull from this to uh, put money onto my easy pass i will it's basically a general car related thing however i do stuff gas separately so gas is a completely separate entity from car maintenance so hopefully that makes sense to you guys Family fun is exactly that. Family fun is to go bowling with the kids, to go camping with the kids, to um, just experience and have fun things going on as a family. So that's simple enough. Christmas, I've already explained Christmas is self-explanatory. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is for unbudgeted expensive things that just came up that I wasn't really expecting to come up. So it's always important to have a miscellaneous because if we know one thing about life, it's that life can be unpredictable and you want to be prepared in the event of something coming up that you may not have already been prepared for. So that's my miscellaneous emergency fund. This is another thing that I feel like if you're new to budgeting, you should have a minimum of $1,000 in your emergency fund. However, that does vary according to your needs and your expenses because I am a family. We have me, my husband, and my two little ones. I do have um, another son, but he is grown. He he has kids of his own, you know? So, so um, I don't really include him into the budget, even though you will see later on, I do include my grandson somewhat into um, my budget, but you'll see that when we get to it. So emergency fund, I wasn't quite feeling comfortable with the idea of only having $1,000 in my emergency fund. I would like to have as of right now, 3000 But once I am completely debt-free, if you've been following me for some time, then you guys already know that I have been on this debt-free journey for some time now, and we are almost done. So once I am debt-free, I do want to have three to six months of expenses in my emergency fund in the event that my husband loses his job or whatever. You never know when you're going to need or when an emergency is going to come up. It could be something as simple as our our car you know just conks out on us completely and we have to buy a new car but um, mainly for me it's for in the event that something happens that we will be able to cover our bills and our expenses for at least three to six months so that gives us three to six months to get back on our feet okay so definitely something that I recommend everybody have giveaways this is high priority to me however this wouldn't make sense um, for anybody else who isn't a content creator. My subscribers are extremely important to me. So I do make it a priority to stuff a little something every week. It is priority to me so that when I'm, whenever I'm doing a giveaway here on my channel, it's kind of like a business expense. So whenever I decide to do a giveaway, I have an allotted amount of money set aside so that I'm able to do that. Medical, medical can be for a variety of things, of course, medically related. So my dog has allergies, I have allergies. So this is more for like over-the-counter medications and things like that, um, things that maybe my insurance won't cover. So that is medical. Holidays, holidays is different from Christmas. And this is a more recent category I decided to add into um, this whole setup. And this is just to cover different holidays that aren't Christmas. So some of the holidays that we celebrate is we're really big on Halloween. We love uh, some Halloween. And so costumes are extremely expensive. Um, Easter, uh, we don't really celebrate too much. Maybe we'll go out and we'll do something as a family, but that would probably come out of family fun. And maybe I'll give like a couple of dollars to my kids or, you know, as a gift for Easter or something like that. But we really don't celebrate anything other than Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Halloween. Those are like our three major holidays. 
birthdays birthdays is a new category that i also implemented and it's separate from my gifting category that you'll see later on and the reason why i decided to do um make a separate birthday envelope is that this has to do with just the people that live in my household so my husband myself my son my daughter the people that live in my households i want to be able to have their separate funds for their special days Okay, and my last envelope in my high priority binder is my current debt. So um, we have Amazon, which is my last debt. And as you guys know, that is definitely top tier priority for me. So this is always getting stuffed and it's always getting pulled from as well because I'm constantly making payments. So that is it for my high priority binder. Hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the kind of things that you should have in your high priority binder. If, like I said, um, if you'd much rather have your bills and your expenses and your rent and all that stuff, your groceries in a binder, then go ahead and do that. It's definitely personal preference, what you find easiest and whatever it is that you find that you're going to be able to keep up with. I also want to mention that simplicity is key. If you are going to do this in the long term, then you want to make sure that the process is easy for you guys. You don't want to overcomplicate your binders. So that is it for my high priority. I guess we would call this, I call this my family binder because it has all of our envelopes in it. However, um, it is high priority. So this gets stuffed every week. So I have my envelope and basically I'm just going to run through the envelopes really quickly. So I have myself, my husband, my daughter, my son, my dog my grandson and my parents so basically this is a necessities binder these are not savings envelopes i'm not really stuffing like savings for my kids right now because we are so hyper focused on becoming debt free once we are debt free we will start stuffing savings envelopes but that's going to be something to come in the future that's not right now right now we are focused on our necessities our basic needs so um if let's say for example my husband needs underwear he needs we recently just pulled from this to get him a new pair of sneakers because he needed some sneakers um for my daughter she's a teenage girl she has she gets pulled from i feel like the most um out of both of my kids because she she's in her teenage years so sometimes she wants to go hang out with her friends some sometimes she wants to do something you know get a new pair of boots or whatever it is so whatever it is that she's needing or wanting for her I would pull from here. So this is not a savings. Like I said, this is only for necessities. So if she needs, you know, undergarments, socks, um, you, what, whatever it is that you can imagine that a teenage girl might want or need, I would pull it from here. Same thing for my son, for like his haircuts, shoes, what, whatever, whatever. Basically, this is to cover their needs or sometimes like for example my son is actually a senior now in elementary school so his senior dues are going to be coming out soon that's something that needs to be paid for so i would pull that from here so moving on to my dog same thing whatever she needs my g baby my grandson um i don't support my grandson financially however when I do see my grandson, I like to be able to give him a couple of bucks. I usually give him $100 um, to give to his mother so that she can get him maybe diapers or wipes or clothes or whatever she needs. So I just like to stuff a little something in there because, you know, that's my baby. <laughs> and I want to be able to give to him. So that is important for me. My parents, again, I have had questions in the past asking me, oh, why do you only stuff $10 in your parents' envelopes every week if you stuff $20 and everybody else's? And it's because, again, I don't support my parents. My parents are self-sufficient individuals. However, if they ever find themselves in a pinch, um, I want to be able to have the funds to be able to help them out. Or if they even just come by to visit. Like a couple of weeks ago, my mother came and I took her to Target and home goods and I was able to treat her and I ordered some takeout and stuff so I just to be able to give back to them it's not really 
um, because I'm supporting them in any way. So that is that. And here is my lowest priority binder. My lowest priority binder has gifting in it. Um, again, gifting is for everyone outside of my household, right? So this is not for like any kind of special anniversary for me and my husband or anything like that. This is just for like if it's somebody else's birthday, my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, whoever it is, and or, or somebody has a baby shower or a wedding or whatever, I can pull it from here. However, it's in my lowest priority binder. The reason for that being is that it's not a necessity. It's not a priority. It's not something that I have to do. If I'm in a pinch and I can't afford to give, then guess what? I'm not going to give because I'm not going to put myself in debt to be able to give to someone else. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So I have gifting in here. I also have date night. Date night, again, is it is important. It is important to make time to um, go out with your spouse or with your significant other and to make that alone time together. And that is important to me and my husband. However... Um, it's not a necessity. If we found ourselves um, not being able to afford to go out on date nights and do these kinds of things, then we just wouldn't because it's not a necessity. It is considered a, lu a luxury to us. So there is that beauty. Beauty is like, beauty is for like my skincare, um, you know, body lotions, soaps, or if randomly I want to get a pedicure and if I have the funds here, I'll do that also. Support a friend. Support a friend is basically funds that I set aside. I have a lot of friends being in the budgeting community that have Etsy shops. So um, if ever I feel so inclined in wanting to support one of my friends or they come out with something really cute and cool and I want to get my hands on it, well, then I would pull from this fund to be able to um, make a purchase from their small business. So this is not an obligation. Again, this is not a priority. This is why it's in my lowest priority binder. Get your nails did. Get your nails did is for exactly what it sounds like. It's for me to get my nails done. Again, it's not a priority, but I do consider this more as like a business expense because I am on social media. I am on YouTube in particular. And, um, all you do see are my hands. For me, I find it important to have the best presentation of them, if that makes sense. So it's, again, if I couldn't afford to do it, then I would show up on here with some stubbies and it would be all good. But I would prefer not to, you know. So we got that. And then Costco's. Costco's is basically for things that are non-food related. I go once a month and I buy my meat in bulk for the month. I do have a deep freezer. So that's separate. That is that goes along with my groceries, right? Which you guys obviously don't get to see because I pull those funds straight out. I use my debit card basically for that. So um this Costco's is for things that are non-food related. So basically I go to Costco's and for example, the last time I went to Costco's, I saw that they had bed sheets on sale, these really great quality bed sheets for $15. And I was like, now is a perfect time to get them because they're so inexpensive. So I pulled that from this fund. Again, not a necessity, but it's nice to have when you need it. Okay, and that is it for my lowest priority binder. I am going to break out my wallet now. Give me one second as I get that. Again, I probably should have started off with um, my wallet, but we're here now, so okay. Okay, so the first category in my wallet is my spending. I do give myself and my husband an allowance. Whether you're single or whether you're a couple, it is important to have a spending category, money that you can spend as you're out and on the go. Um, I feel like it's important that when you're doing your budget that you don't feel so restricted because I feel like when you restrict yourself too much, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. 
and we don't want to fail at this, right? So you want to give yourself a little something, a little allowance, nothing crazy. I give myself $50 a week. My husband gets $50 a week. That's what works for us. And in our budget, it works for us. Um, and we've been doing that for quite some time and we haven't had any problems with that. So an allowance is always important. And it also gives you a limit. It, it tells you, okay, you can't spend any more than this, right? Because when we don't give ourselves a limit, then we'll start swiping and we'll just start buying stuff all willy-nilly because we didn't tell ourselves this is when we're cut off. So I feel like it's important to give yourself a realistic spending limit. If you're a big spender, try to hone down on it a little bit. But I wouldn't say if you're used to spending, you know, $150 a week to give yourself 20 bucks for the week. Because chances are that's not going to work out for you. So try to, try to hone in on where you're spending and try to give yourself a realistic budget. But still try to challenge yourself to improve and always, you know, work on yourself when it comes to your budget. So I felt like $50 works for me and my husband. And like I said, we haven't had any problems. Gas, gas is gone. I do fill up on Sundays or Mondays. Usually every week we fill up our car. We were giving ourselves $50 a week. My husband is the one that mainly uses the car. He uses it to go to and from work. Um, when I'm running you know, errands or whatever, he's usually with me on his days off. And that's when we do all of that. So um, we were giving ourselves, like I said, $50 a week. But however, with the prices of gas going up, we did bump it up to 60. And that seems to be working for us. Takeout, we do give ourselves a takeout limit. Um, we are a family of four. So I do give us $50 and that allows us to get takeout at least once, maybe twice a week, if um, depending on where we're ordering from. So yeah, that's takeout. Give. Give is just, I give, I give, give. <laughs> I basically allot five dollars a week um, towards my give category, and that's if I'm about if I'm out and about, and someone asks me for a few dollars, then I'm able to have that, and that doesn't dip into any other budget. Household household is for household needs. Um, the amount that I stuff in here changes from week to week, depending again on my needs. So this is like for toilet paper, paper towels, anything that we might need for the household. Um, if we need a new shower curtain, if we need dish soap, uh, whatever, whatever it is that's household related, it would go in here. The last couple of weeks I've been giving it like $50, but it does change depending on what I'm going to need. Usually I'll make a list of the things that I'm needing in the house. And so I'll be able to gauge how much I need to stuff. But I try not to stuff any more than $50 a week. Miscellaneous is it's just for that. Miscellaneous. This is honestly, it's just kind of turned into mine and my husband's like Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts envelope. <laughs> so if we want a coffee or something like that, while we're out running errands, we'll just pull it from here. Challenge. Challenge is, um, it's basically like, let's say I break a $20 bill and I get, you know, a five back or two fives and five singles back. I will put it in my ch challenge envelope and that's only because I am doing the $1 and the $5 challenge. So it just gives me a place to house those funds until I get to my next week's budget. So this isn't necessary for your budget unless you're doing some kind of challenge, then it just helps me stay organized with my funds. Um, my other envelope, my other envelope is basically, okay, Let's say, for example, I'm pulling Bubba's funds because I know that Bubba's going to be needing sneakers. So I don't want to get confused <laughs> with my funds, right? So I will put it in my others just to house it, to keep it organized. And then whatever's left over after I pulled, after I used whatever I needed to use from the funds, it will go back into its um, normal housing spot.
okay and that's pretty much it you guys um i'm not gonna go through like my challenge envelopes you guys see those every week you guys know what savings challenges are and if you're new and you don't know then go check out some of my savings challenges it's just a fun way of saving up funds for whatever it is that you want so and that is it everybody I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys found it helpful, especially for those of you who are new to the budgeting community. Again, I hope this wasn't overwhelming. I did get a lot of people saying that they wanted to see all I had in my binders. So I covered the most important, I feel like. Again, if you are starting new to the budgeting community, high priority, low priority, figure out what that is for you and start start working at it you know and try to make the method as simple for you as possible everybody's budget is different because everybody's priorities and needs are different so my budget may not work for somebody else and i totally get that and you know somebody else's budget will most likely not work for me because we all lead very different lives and what we deem as priority and non-priority may differ from one another's and that's okay. So do what works for you. Okay. And when starting off with, with your budget, just know that things are going to change. Don't try to have it all figured out from the first day that you start because it's just, it's not going to happen. Still to this day, years later into my budget, I'm finding and tweaking and adding new envelopes or pulling some stuff out um, that I thought was important and find out that it's not really that important. And, you know, so you're constantly changing your budget. It's going to be evolving. So give yourself some grace. Know that you're not going to get it all right away. But eventually, you'll come up with a formula that works really well for you guys, and you'll stick to it. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate you guys as always. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!